listen, it's so nice to chat to you. And um, it's, do you know, I was, when I knew I was going to chat to you, I was trying to remember uh, the first time that I became aware of you. And it was definitely yeah. when the single came out. And because that was your first single, it was huge. So it must have been 1993 that we first That's became right. aware of you. That's right. It was June the 7th, 93, that um, Dreams was released. And by June the 21st, it had hit the number one spot on my mum's birthday. So I'm never, ever going to forget that. So, yeah, it, was, it just I can't believe it's nearly three decades ago. So, yeah. I well, I can, I, can, I can remember it as well. So it's, it's quite frightening how time flies. I actually can't yeah. believe, I mean, how amazing, how brilliant that your very first single that you called yeah. as well. Yes. Went, it, went, it went to number two, then it went to number one. But the fact yeah. that it went into the charts for a few weeks was, I mean, how, how does that make you feel? First single, straight in there. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Yeah, to this day, I'd always be super chuffed because when, you know, it'd gone straight in at number two and then number one, it actually made history as the highest ever debut song by a debut artist to, to, to land so highly in the charts since the charts since the charts had begun so when you have those little things and all the things that I've gone through in my life I would have never thought I'd be there top of the pops people would be talking about this song that I'd written and it's it was amazing and now even when I look back now I'll always have fond memories of the song to the point that I always still love singing it most people get to my time in life and they're like the first song that launched me I don't want to know anything about it but not me I forever will love that song and I think my audience would kill me if I decided never to sing it again so um no uh, it's like my 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 first love that song is. yeah isn't it funny how you almost didn't even go into music wasn't there a point where you were going to do law yes um when I was younger I was either going to become an educational psychologist or a lawyer and then I settled on I'll probably do law and then whilst I was singing at a nightclub I was doing my A-levels and I didn't pass my A-levels because I was too busy singing you know singing at a certain nightclub but my thing my promise to my mum was if it didn't ever happen, I've got the rest of my life to study. <laughs> I've got the rest of my life to study. I had no children. I was young and, and do whatever, you know, I needed to do to live the life that I probably didn't want to live, you know, but to, to live the boring life for me, it would have been boring. Music was my life. So thankfully I didn't, you know, um, ever have to go and study law, but I don't think I would have made a good lawyer, but there's reasons that I can't mention about <laughs> I can't, you know, we, you know, I won't go there. I'll sound like a psycho if I start talking. Shh. Yeah. Can, can I ask you, when did you, um, when did you first become Gabrielle? Or is that, if you were you always called Gabrielle? No, it's funny. When I was growing up, I was aware of my middle name, which is Gabriella. And um, if, what used to happen, I'd say to my mum, why do I have, why do I have a middle name if we don't even, if I can't even use it? And she said, well, when I was younger, she's like, well, when you go to your new school, you can actually just ask them to call you by, you know, your middle name. And I, I was just too lazy. I couldn't be bothered. And I thought, oh, a bit pretentious. Maybe I just I don't need anyone to know that's my name. And then I started singing at a club called Moonlight in Greek Street. And the, in fact, before I started singing there, there was a lady who was the one who was booking all the talent. And she's like, what's your name, darling? What's your name? She's very like that. She was so posh. And her name was Lady Carol. And um, I, she was like, my first name, it's Louise, or Louisa, because my mum's angry with me. And, um, cause, and then she's like, what's your middle name, darling? What's your middle name? Gabrielle. Because <laughs> even I was Gabriella, I actually always thought as Louise Gabrielle, but I'm actually Louisa Gabriella. So, um, yeah. Um, and she's like, what's your middle name, darling? I'm like, oh, it's Gabrielle. She's like, yes, let's call you Gabrielle. Let's call you Gabrielle for now. And it stuck, and I was chuffed because I didn't have to make up a name. I was able to use my middle name, and that's how it came about. So um, it's weird because now I still get called both. So, you know, you'll find me answering to both. But a lot of people I knew later in life, they just call me Gabs, Gabby Gabs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. But I'm still so early, early days is Louise. And then yeah. You, okay, fine. Yeah, but my mum, she's angry with me. Louisa, <laughs> mum, I'm middle-aged now. You can't call me like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Parents always revert back to the, the longest form, the most one that you precisely, want. yeah, exactly. That's, that's the way it is. Mind you, you're a mum as well, so you probably. I do am. It too. Oh yeah, mine just don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the way it is how is it now having having two kids because obviously yes. um your son's in his mid-20s isn't he yes he's in his and does 20s, he works yes. in music music well? industry yeah he's in the music industry and then my youngest she's studying creative media so she's I've both got quite arty children so um yeah and you know for the both of them they're just used to what I do and they often do what they do but I think there's a connection between us three so you know it's like yeah you've had so many huge songs as well I was just like writing down some of the songs just to refresh my memory and I was like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah so what was it like then to have you know to be so successful and then to take a break because you had about what 11 years out the limelight did it feel like when you came back did it feel like you were starting again no I tell you what it was I mean once I'd had my children I never really wanted to be away from them for too long so I didn't I was never really, how would I say, um, guilty. I never felt guilty about taking such long breaks in between, but the longest was 11 years. But what people hadn't realised that although I hadn't made a new record, I was from time to time going on tour. I'd, you know, supported some greats. I'd been on tour with Al Green. I'd been on tour with people like um, Michael Bolton. I even did, you know, a tour with Rick Astley, the great Rick Astley. They're all greats. I don't know, you know, so many people. And it was just one of those things, it was so nice. I think that that gave me that kind of taste of you know what I'm I'm missing going on the road with my own band and stuff so I couldn't wait to actually you know put out new music have my band and just go on the road and tour and, and since then I haven't looked back and you know there was that 11 year gap and then in 2018 I brought out Under My Skin and then now the fact that we're in 2021 and I've got this new album Do It Again and I feel like I don't think I'll ever leave such a long gap again. I, I guess that's to do with the fact my children are older. I'm older. I've got more time to be selfish, enjoy my life. I'm living my best life. I get to spend time with my children. Half the time, they don't want to be hanging out with me, but it's <laughs> fine. And then I get to go on the road with an amazing band. And once this crazy time has passed of this, you know, the whole pandemic, then I'm looking forward, to, as everybody else will be, to coming out their houses and doing what we all love, whether it's hanging out with, you know, our loved ones, Ones, giving hugs to our loved ones doing shows returning to normal going back to work and just living and I, and I always say now we'll never take anything for granted ever again I think when we get back to normal oh I don't think you're alone I think there's yeah. so many people that feel the same and you know yeah. what you are going back aren't you going on tour at the end of the year? I'm oh, yes. <laughs> Listen, and you know it hell yeah there's no you know to say if is a dirty word and a swear word in my language there's no if there's no maybe as far as I'm concerned it's when I'm on tour in November and when we're all out and we can come out to play and do whatever it is that makes us happy and that's what I'm looking forward to my eyes on the prize of touring and I'm just you know looking forward to promoting this album singing the songs from this album and just just living my best life as we all hopefully will be doing then as well I'm actually amazed there are any venues left <laughs> Because, you know what? Everyone wants to be out there. And yes. you, know, you know, you're one of the lucky ones that's got yes. the dates in because that's there right. must be so many people that are like, oh, I want to do it. Most definitely. And I think, you know, between, you know, hopefully by the end of this year and next year, everybody's dates would have um, kind of change I mean obviously we had to reschedule mine and other people have done it. And I guess that's how we've got our dates locked in. And and for other things that were aren't going to go ahead like you know like from July onwards until maybe November when things start happening those dates have gone to 2022 so I'm really excited for all of us so for those of us who will be able to go on the road and, and be touring this year wonderful for those of us who have to wait till next year bring it on we're all going to have a party so I think that's all we can do is just just be positive and, and just hang on in there because you know we're going to be okay you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. And um, you did mention as well your new album, Do It Again. And I've got to say, there are some great tracks on there. You've done some, co- I know you've got, you've yes. got original yes. songs. Yes. But you've got, I mean, you've done some covers. Uh, yes. uh, Killing Me Softly, which is yes. one of my favorite songs. Thank you. What a great one. And you've also got um, Fast Car, which That's ironically, right is what dreams was that's right on in the first exactly place. i mean i don't believe i could have done a, a covers album one first without the songs from the mass singer because this whole album was inspired by the mass singer but two songs like tracy chapman fast car um that song for me is part of my legacy because that's how i first started and i love you know and adore tracy chapman she's just amazing so to be able to sing this song it's like paying homage to 
you know, her talent and, and the beginning of my career, because without being presented with Fast Car and being asked whether I could sing, sing something on it, write something to it, I don't think I'd be here. I really don't. So, you know, yeah, had to go on the album. But we, you know, we have, you know, Harry Styles on there falling. We have Billie Eilish. We have, you know, oh my God, we've got Tina Turner and Sam Cooke, um, you know, uh, God, uh, Smile. It's the songs we've got. And then by adding a further new, two new songs, one of them, which is my current single, um, Stop Right Now, and another song I wrote called You Can't Hurry Love, which is not <laughs> the one that everyone's like, oh my God, is that the Supreme song? No, 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 it's not that one. And um, I've just had so much fun. And, and so far the album, everyone has been so amazing and, and saying lovely things about it and, you know, just messaging me. And so I'm really proud of it. And I can't believe that during such a, a crazy time I've been able to record, um, you know, a new album. So yeah, yeah, I hope people get to hear it and enjoy it. When you do come up with a new album or a new single that you've written, yeah. who's the first person you play it to? My manager's the first person because she's okay. usually there. Um, she comes with me around the country whenever I'm writing and stuff, but she's usually the first person. And then outside of that, my kids. Yeah, my kids, because they are my biggest supporters. Um, it's really funny because I, I think they think they can A&R me and it's hilarious. Um, oh my you God. Know. Sorry, we've got company. A gorgeous song. Oh. Oh, see, awesome. oh, one. <laughs> yeah. I, I I mean I try to lock him out and he just butts his no, way back in. There he, we go. He misses you. He misses you. <laughs> this is the problem with doing everything from home, isn't it? But it's fun. I, I think we all I, I guess by now we should all be chilled. It's been a year, you know, it is what it is, and we 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 make do with what we have. And I think that you know it's actually quite funny when you see dogs or little kids running in. I, I'm like, I live for those viral videos. When everyone else has been having a you know a pretty quiet time living at home, trying <laughs> <laughs> to, trying to break their day up by going yeah. for a walk to the park. Yeah. You have been busy filming The Masked Singer. So it must That's have been right. quite an exciting injection into lockdown life. It really was because up until that time, I think had I been busy, I probably would have never have done it and I would have missed the most amazing experience. But it was a case of when I was approached, you know, we were in lockdown. How hard could this have been? Boy, did I realize it was a hard thing to do, um, you know, but it was incredible. It was that opportunity to to go and sing. You know, if you'd asked me to do a dancing show, I'd be like, that's not my thing. I can't dance. I'm, I'm not going to be out of my in my, you know, I'll be out of my comfort zone. Um, so I went on to do the show. I was able to get out of my house, you know, for, for a minute, for a moment, for the while that we were doing it, because it, it, it spanned, you know, a few weeks. It was a case of it didn't feel like I was in lockdown and you can live that little fantasy. And I feel almost guilty saying that to everyone who was at home, but you know, I had this opportunity um, to be part of this amazing show. And it was so entertaining that when we finished and I was at home, I was gripped like the rest of the nation. It was a phenomenal show. I had a lot of fun. I didn't get to know who anybody was until I was at home watching the unmasking and yeah, it was incredible. So I'm glad that I was able to do it. I'm glad that I was able to, to go out and, and, and as much as I feel guilty, no regrets because, you know, this album was born. I've had so much, so many people like giving such wonderful, um, how would I say, saying nice things, you know, about me, about my career, about what I did on the show, about my new album. I just feel like, I feel like I'm living a different life again. It's really weird because we're only in lockdown for a year. It's been a year, but it feels like so much has happened. And to be on that show, it's like, a, it's given me a bit of a boost. Yeah. So I'm like, I've just, yeah, I, I'm glad I did it. And to think I nearly quit on the first day. So I'm so glad that I put on my big girl pants and got on with it and stopped moaning and about- it. massive hat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. The costume was phenomenal. The mask was, you know a masterpiece because they would give me a red face one day I'd have a golden face another day and although it was hot and I was moaning like I was the biggest Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa but I'm glad I stuck out because it was incredible and I think I wasn't really appreciative of it, of it all until I was at home watching all the things that I probably didn't notice when I was there like the the magnitude of the whole show the the, the amazingness of the the you know how they dressed the shows how each performance had different like staging 
And I'd say things like, I didn't realize that was there. So I'm so, you know, I'm like a big kid. I was like a big kid watching all. So yeah, amazing times. I should shut up now because I can just gush about this show. It's just incredible. But I've got a new album, so I should talk about that instead. <laughs> well, the only question I do have yes. about it is what happens when you're in there? You've just done your performance. Yeah. And then they go, they ask the panel, yeah. who do you think it is? And obviously they were going, Just Stone or yeah. Denise Lewis yeah. or whatever. When you heard Matt Lucas say, I think it's Gabrielle, <laughs> what was your, were you like that? Uh-oh. I was oh, like, no. uh-oh. No, I was a bit scared because Matt Lucas, he, I adore him and he's a fan of my, he's, you know, I love him and he loves me. And I was like, oh no, this, I was hoping that I would manage to kind of stop anyone from guessing, but I don't think I was good in my concealment because I thought yeah I'm going to go and not sing like me but I think when I get a bit nervous and a bit scared under there I'd resort to the only thing I knew and so I probably couldn't hold I couldn't kind of hold the kind of the pretense so I was trying but I think he rumbled me and was like oh I think it's you but um you know I I was just happy I, you know I was happy because he was there they were all amazing. The comments weekly were incredible. And I loved watching on social media, everybody either making assumptions it was me or somebody else. And I just loved it. It was a case of the names they were coming out with. I was like, oh my God, they're going to be annoying because they're far better than me. But I was just having fun with it all. So, you know, um, yeah, I was just happy. And my last question for you is, what is the first thing you want to do when you get out of lockdown? Tour. As soon as oh, the first yes. thing is go on tour it, that's what I'm living for and again it's all about the touring it's all about getting out there and I've got these amazing songs that I want to showcase and I've got you know my back catalogue that I want to showcase so it's for me it's all about going on the road with my band and just having a blast and, and again just continuing to live you know knowing that you know we've we've come through lockdown and it's been hard for each and every one of us. I end up getting COVID and thankfully I'm COVID free and, you know, and my heart goes out to everybody and anyone who's ever suffered or suffered a loss because it's been horrific times. But for me, knowing that we've, we've all had to endure to be able to come out of this and to see and to get a sense of some normality for me, that will be going on the road and being with my band and, and just going from town to town, just enjoying myself with the show. So that's for me, the most, the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. I've been locked in lockdown with my family. So, you know, I don't have to worry about where they've been. And my heart goes out to all those who've been separated. So once, you know, everyone else can go and do what they want to do that makes them happy and hugging all your family members. For me, it will be, I want to be on that stage and that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hugging people again. I'm quite, I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> Tell me about it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. So um, yeah. So, and that's it. So for all of us, and I, I just wish each and every one of us that that happy positive time when we can all do that and we can all just you know just breathe you know because this has been crazy and yeah it's like oh, when is it going to happen is it going to happen no it will happen and that's I'm of that mindset you've just got to speak it you speak it and, it and it becomes you know a reality and I think there's enough of us in the world to, to be able to speak it for it to become you know a reality and dreams can come true I, I said that. Yeah. I, I think yes. you might have written that. <laughs> I wrote that. I wrote it and I, and I live by that. Yeah. Um, listen, thank you so much for coming thank and talking you. to me today. Good luck with the album as well. And also with the single Stop Right Now is the first, is that the, the first single you wrote? Yeah, as well? yes, that's right. It's my first original song from this album because although it's an album of covers, I did think it was important to put two new songs that I'd written myself. So to make sure people remember what I do also, aside from singing those covers. So it was a fun thing to do. Oh, brilliant. It's been so lovely chatting to you. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And I give your gorgeous dog a, a no. he's gone, but a big hug because I love dogs. I'm just allergic, but I do love them. Oh, he's, he's actually, I'm amazed you can't hear him. He's not that our chat's boring for him, <laughs> <laughs> but he's snoring. Oh, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Yeah, he knows you're, you're close by. He's comfortable now. So. Yeah, that might be it. Uh, Gabrielle, thank you so, so much. Thank you, my darling. It's been okay. an honor.